uh, good morning, everybody. Um, so yeah, as uh, as introduced there, my name is Michael Creaves. Um, I uh, am presenting this project, a uh, kind of collaborative project among staff of uh, University Hospital Galway and uh, those of us from the Irish Centre for Applied Patient Safety and Simulation in NUI Galway, where I was working as a simulation fellow for the past year. Um, so the project is a QI project uh, called Improving Cardiac Arrest Response Systems in a Mental Health Unit Using Large-Scale in situ Simulation. So just to give you a bit of background uh, about this project, so this building here is the wonderful new state-of-the-art acute adult mental health unit that was opened in Galway uh, in July 2018. Um, so this building, it's, it was much needed upgrade from the previous facilities, which had been quite outdated, and, and it's a great resource for, um, for the mental health services in the west of Ireland. Uh, and it's a lovely building, nice modern design with some nice overhanging windows, which I'll allude to a little bit later on as well. But you can see there just over the door, um, some overhangs there. Um, so the, as I said, this, this unit opened in July 2018. And it's for the first time uh, this unit is a remote site within the main hospital campus. But, uh, so it's, it's not connected to the general hospital. It's only a short walk across the car park, um, but this poses potential problems because the old psychiatric unit used to be connected to the respiratory and neurological unit by a corridor, so it was easily accessible um, from the hospital and all of the medical staff, generally speaking, knew where it was. Uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, as a result of infrequency of medical emergencies on site and the lack of familiarity of the emergency response team uh, with the new unit, it was suggested that maybe we should look at, at, at uh, cardiac arrest responses within the unit. Uh, so the aims of this, this project were to test procedures, protocols, working environment and equipment when there's a cardiac arrest in uh, the mental health unit and to generate recommendations to hospital management for improving emergency response in the AAMHU and then subsequently checking to see if these, uh, if, if these recommendations have improved the response. And also just to assess the suitability of, of on-site simulation as a method for testing cardiac arrest response systems. So, to begin with, uh, in the planning phase of this project, uh, the stakeholders were identified. So it was a, a broad multidisciplinary team of various medical staff from uh, the different relevant specialties, uh, nursing staff, so both from the psychiatric uh, perspective, but also from resource and from intensive care. Uh, also ambulance staff, as because it's a remote site within the hospital, any patient that has a, a cardiac arrest needs to be transferred by ambulance to the general hospital. Um, and then also security who, who work within the unit and ourselves in ICAPS for actually planning and executing the simulation. So regular multidisciplinary meetings took place from August to October to, to plan in detail uh, this event. So after much deliberation, um, a suitable date and suitable times for the, the mock codes uh, were identified. Rather ominously, uh, we decided to put it on the 31st of October, um, uh, which yeah, was a kind of funny timing. but. Uh, we decided to run two codes, so we, ran, we started er early in the morning and the, fir so the first code was during the night shift when there's a skeleton staff on uh, while it's dark outside and then we ran a second code a couple of hours later after morning handover, so when there's more staff but also other problems posed by there being more traffic around and uh, more people around. So suitable rooms uh, to have the codes in were identified. We did one on the top and one on the bottom floor, which is important uh, in this unit because there's only one arrest trolley for the whole building, so it's important to, man to, to see how this would work. Uh, and then the high fidelity man uh, simulation mannequins were installed on the eve of the codes, and recording devices were installed. So we had video and audio recording within uh, the rooms themselves, and then also had audio recording on the ambulance trolley uh, to monitor the transfer. So in the morning of the event, um, the confederate, there was a confederate nurse who acted as the first responder. So to tell you a little bit about our patient, so our patient, he was named, uh, his name is John O'Neill, he's a man in his mid-40s with a background history of schizophrenia and multiple, uh, multiple comorbidities that were suggestive of cardiac disease. Uh, he was admitted involuntarily overnight and unfortunately as he became agitated in A&E required rapid tranquilization and a few hours later went into VF arrest as he was being clerked in by the confederate nurse. So the confederate nurse uh, called the arrest and uh, it, it was just performed then as if it was a normal a normal cardiac arrest on the ward. Confederates were in the room and throughout the unit observing the emergency response and the important thing here was that we had peers were observing peers so we had security observing the security staff, ambulance observing ambulance staff etc. Uh, once the arrest team had fully uh, the full arrest team had arrived uh, ROSC was achieved on the first shock 
and then the code was terminated once the patient was transferred into the ambulance. And then after each of the mock codes, uh, we ran a multidisciplinary debrief, um, which is a semi-structured discussion, and this is audio recorded for later analysis. Moving on from that then, so after these, uh, with, with the transcription of these uh, audio recordings of the debrief, uh, these were shared amongst all members of the MDT, um, and then key phrases were transcribed by everyone. We had one final meeting then to, to hash out these, uh, these key phrases that we'd identified and identify suitable themes. And then the transcriptions were collated and a thematic analysis was co coordinated by the principal investigator. So we're in the kind of study phase of the PDSA cycle here. Uh, and then moving on to the action. So this thematic analysis, what we did with this was it, it was used to generate a report of practical recommendations with the proper timeline for hospital management to, to fix some things. So that the key uh, themes that were identified. So firstly, there was an issue with access. So one of these things was awareness of the location. There wasn't very good awareness of where the building was amongst medical staff. And also there wasn't particularly good signposting, especially at night, uh, it was difficult to find the unit. But then also there were issues with accessing the unit. And this was twofold. One, as I alluded to earlier, so there's these overhangs over the door of the unit, uh, which looked nice and everything, but it meant that an ambulance couldn't back up to the door. So in the case of it being wet, you have a patient being transferred in the rain uh, to get into the ambulance. Um, and then also there was an issue with parking. So it's quite a small car park outside the unit and the parking was not being monitored by the unit themselves. There was lots of double parking, people parking on double yellowed lines. And a few minutes before the first code happened, there was actually a truck blocking the entrance to the unit. So there was, there was issues here in terms of just regulating the, the car park. Uh, then there was uh, issues with exchanging information. So this was both within members, between members of the arrest team and between the various disciplines, but also from switch to the, uh, to the arrest team. There wasn't particularly clear instructions on getting to the unit. There was a lack of leadership uh, noted during the arrest. Um, so no one was identifying themselves as the leader of the arrest um, from the arrest team's perspective. Then there was proce some procedural barriers in terms of equipment. So there was some outdated equipment. The AED was, uh, was outdated and uh, was using BLS uh, algorithms from a few years ago rather than up-to-date ones. And also there was, an issue, there was some issues with medical knowledge and skill. The thing with psychiatric units is that the staff generally are exceptionally good at managing psychiatric uh, issues, but aren't necessarily particularly um, used to dealing with medical problems. Uh, so there's some issues with that. And also there was inpatient risk identified in that patients, as all the doors were open during the arrest, some patients were coming and going, um, uh, and there was just issues in terms of safety um, with that. So after the, this report was sent to hospital management, um, there was a timeline, as I said, put in place to, uh, to, to enact these recommendations. And then 12 months later, we did a second cycle. So this was just done about three weeks ago. This, the exact same uh, design was done in terms of running the mock codes. And there showed to be a marked improvement in process. So there was quicker response by the arrest team, better signposting to the unit. The parking restrictions, they were now being controlled by the unit. So there's, uh, the, there was better building access there clear communication through the switchboard and also the, the equipment so the AED had been updated since the previous arrest. However, there were still ongoing issues with both technical and non-technical skills in managing the arrest. So there was still this lack of leadership um, when managing it. There was still poor communication and handover between various members of staff and also there was some in inadequate BLS skills uh, noted uh, amongst the staff of the, the mental health unit. So just to discuss the, these findings a little bit. so. What we, what we found is that in situ simulation it is effective for improving the system, certainly. These sort of large scale simulations identified the barriers within the system that needed to be improved. However, it didn't give any improvement in technical and non-technical skills. Some barriers to the quality improvement here. Um, one thing is sort of simulation anxiety syndrome. There was a lot of anxiety within the unit, especially when the repeat codes were happening, when they heard that they were going to happen the night before. Um, because they, they, they were aware of what had happened previously and they were a bit anxious about, about engaging with it. And also, um, the significant resources requirement to run such a large scale uh, simulation event. So how can we fix this? Um, I think the main thing really is that we were adaptable when repeating PDSA cycles to, to continue improvement with this. And a suggestion is, is frequent low fidelity simulation to improve skills, both technical and non-technical among staff of the unit. Some of the strengths and limitations of this particular project. So there was rigorous planning and methodology um, with widespread multidisciplinary input involved. And it was a real-time on-site simulation. It was quite realistic. 
Uh, some of the limitations, so yeah, nursing staff were partially aware due to us having to set up the simulation on the eve of the event. Uh, ambulance staff had to be made aware of the mock code um, for uh, policy reasons. Then also there was a, a kind of unfortunate issue with the timing of the second cycle. So sadly there was a death by suicide on, in the unit a few weeks prior to the second, um, the second code which kind of added to the anxiety I think on the unit of, of running it. And also the second mock code um, in the second cycle couldn't be run uh, because of an arrest that actually happened in the general hospital. So just quickly in conclusion, large scale in situ simulation is suitable for testing the cardiac arrest response systems. Stakeholder buy-in is key to its success. Adaptability is key uh, in driving to improve both the system and the skills. And uh, from now on, there, there is one of the doctors uh, in the staff in the unit who is going to be doing frequent low fidelity simulation training um, so that we can improve on the next PDSA cycle. Uh, just acknowledging some of the, the help that we had from security and ambulance staff uh, and the cardiac arrest team and also all the staff and patients in AMHU for 